everyone at the onset i like to thank dr mayur for inviting me to deliberate on the subject of reversal of diabetes which is very interesting and very important for physician community to know that what are the facts whether we can achieve reversal of diabetes or not now when we are talking about the concept of reversal of diabetes we have to understand that there are two important terms remission and reversal of diabetes what are the differences reversal is defined as restoration to good health while remission is defined as abatement or disappearance of signs and symptoms of disease now for a disease like diabetes which is a chronic disease it may be more accurate to use the term remission than reversal which actually means cure of the disease so henceforth we have to understand this difference and we will be largely talking whatever we are discussing means remission of diabetes also note in type 1 diabetes there is no concept of remission or reversal now when it comes to remission of diabetes there are three important terms as far as definition is concerned partial remission complete remission and prolonged remission partial remission is defined as when an individual is having blood sugar that does not meet the criteria for type 2 diabetes for at least one year while not taking any medications to lower glucose levels complete remission when glucose levels are within normal range for at least one year while not taking any anti diabetic medication and once this is for prolonged period that is maintaining a normal glucose value for at least 5 year without taking any medication it is known as prolonged remission now what are the important questions which we are going to answer during this webinar are beta cell really gone at diagnosis or they are just dormant when we are talking of concept of remission can they be brought back to the function again if yes then what are the strategies do we have clinical evidence of remission can it be used as a therapeutic strategy whenever we call the concept of reversibility or remission we have to understand that there is a known concept of glucotoxicity and glycotoxicity in patients of diabetes which is responsible for decrease in pancreatic beta cell as well as decreased utilization of glucose in the peripheral tissue very recently the twin cycle hypothesis has been given to un to, to understand or to take care of this concept of lipotoxicity and beta toxicity and obviously beta cell d differentiation now what is twin cycle hypothesis ross et al has given this concept that when a person is in positive calorie intake for a long period of time which is currently the environment in which we are living this excess of calorie intake will lead on to excess accumulation of fat into the liver now once liver is loaded with lots of fat it spills over into the blood in form of increased vldl triglyceride now later on these excess of fat which actually should only be stored into the adipose tissue overwhelms the capacity of adipose tissue goes to the tissue where it should not be like pancreatic islet cell which is normally free of or very minimum less than 2 grams of fat and when there is deposition of fat in the pancreatic islet it will result in decreased insulin response to ingested glucose the result in rise in plasma glucose values when there is a rise in plasma glucose value it will result in a vicious cycle and ultimately glucotoxicity lipotoxicity resulting in decreased function of pancreas at the level of liver increased resistance to the action of insulin will result in rise in fasting plasma glucose when this excess of fat is deposited into the muscle it is known as marbleization of the muscle which will result in decreased utilization of glucose by the muscles moving forward what are the key observational changes which support actually twin cycle hypothesis as a cause of type 2 diabetes remember weight gain is the strongest modifiable risk factor for type 2 diabetes if you screen patients before they develop type 2 diabetes who are obese the rise in alt and ggt concentration which are liver enzyme occur at least in 
two to three years before they develop type two diabetes. Usually, as I have told you, pancreatic beta cells are free of fat. In patients of type two diabetes, it has been shown that there is presence of lots of fat inside pancreas. First phase of insulin response is impaired in patients of type two diabetes, and excess fatty acids are known to bring about beta cell differentiation and inhibit insulin release. Moving forward, can we reverse this twin cycle? Now, again, it has been shown that when obese type two diabetic individual, they are given a very low calorie diet, which means diet containing less than 600 kilocalories a day are given to these individual within 24 to 48 hour there is a decrease in fat flowing to the liver result in decrease in output of fat from the liver which will result in mobilization of ectopic fat which is deposited in pancreas as well as muscle and other tissue all this will result in restoration of normal response of pancreas to the glucose as well as utilization of glucose by the peripheral tissue. So it is possible that reversing the twin cycle by giving a very low calorie diet which means a negative energy balance can effectively improve beta cell function. So if we see the evidence again for reversing twin cycle, intensive weight loss by any method actually can reverse type 2 diabetes including in those patients who are taking insulin therapy from a short period of time. Plasma ALT and GGT concentration decreases in parallel with weight loss and glucose reduction. There is normalization of hepatic insulin sensitivity. As pancreatic fat decreases, there is restoration of first phase of insulin secretion and there are evidences that it will result in beta cell recovery with restoration of insulin production capacity. So this is twin cycle hypothesis. Now do we have evidence? Let's look at evidences. There are three very important evidences, counterpoint study, counterbalance study and direct study. What is counterpoint study? Counteracting pancreatic inhibition of insulin secretion by triglyceride. Counterbalance study stands for counteracting beta cell failure by long term action to normalize calorie intake. And direct study is diabetes remission clinical trial. If you look at counterpoint study, it is basically done to test a hypothesis, twin cycle hypothesis, that both beta cell failure and insulin resistance can be reversed by dietary restriction of energy fat. 11 patients of type 2 diabetes were given 6 diet. What are the results? As you see in this cartoon, by using 600 kilocalories of diet within first week, fasting plasma glucose improves substantially. Along with improvement of this fasting plasma glucose, as you see, there is marked decrease in liver fat and improvement in liver insulin sensitivity. If you look at pancreas, it is at week 8, there is a decrease in pancreatic fat and along with improvement decrease in liver fat, simultaneously there is restoration of first phase of insulin secretion. So the counterpoint study concluded that it is possible to normalize both beta cell function and hepatic insulin sensitivity in patients of type 2 diabetes by dietary energy restriction alone. This is associated with a decrease in pancreatic as well as hepatic fat accumulation and abnormalities of type 2 diabetes can be reversed. The next important question comes, can we replicate can count the, the findings of counterpoint studies, can people with a longer duration of diabetes, they can have reversal? And if is reversal of type 2 diabetes is durable, if body weight remains stable? So counterbalance study tries to answer these two questions and it has been shown that in those who are having shorter duration of diabetes compared to longer duration of diabetes, 
the results are better in those who have short duration of diabetes the restoration of fasting plasma glucose is also much much better in those with short duration of diabetes as compared to long duration of diabetes if we see and segregate patient according to the duration of diabetes as you see again this cartoon less than 4 year 4 to 8 year and more than 12 years of diabetes those less than 4 years of diabetes almost all of them have remission of diabetes in contrast to a very few patients with duration of diabetes more than 12 years then the third important study is diabetes remission clinical trial that is direct study now it has been done to understand whether the results of counterpoint and counterbalance study can be applied in a routine clinical practice by a primary care practitioner so the study is done in 49 primary care practices in scotland and england and as you see average duration of diabetes is six years intervention is basically withdrawal of anti-diabetic and anti-hypertensive when they were patients were given 825 to 853 kilocalorie formula diet for three to five months what are the results of direct study direct study shows that weight loss of 15 kgs or more in 36 patients that is 24 percent in the intervention group and there is a remission of 46 percent participant in a remission group as compared to 4% in control group. Again, highlighting the fact that calorie restriction will result in a remission of diabetes. Now, this slide actually tries to compare all the three important study that is counterpoint, counterbalance and direct study. But the key learnings which I will try to summarize for you for the three studies are that 40 to 45% of patients can achieve remission and durability of remission has been demonstrated for at least up to one year. Younger patient, that is less than 50 years, as compared to those more than 59 years, with the relatively shorter duration of diabetes are able to achieve remission more. Individual who are needing lesser number of medication at baseline, having lower fasting plasma glucose and lower HbA1c are more likely to benefit. And response actually neither depends on absolute weight loss or nor at baseline weight or bmi now this is very important there is no change in muscle insulin resistance on diet restriction the reduction in hepatic glucose output again was comparable in both responder and non-responders what is most important improvement is beta cell function it improved markedly in responders as compared to non-responders and weight loss of 15 kgs from baseline was established as a potential threshold for remission of diabetes in all these three important trials moving further very recently we also come to know that there are different phenotypes in type 2 diabetes so what are the types of type 2 diabetes mellitus which can have remission now we can have patients of type 2 diabetes with severely insulin deficient, those who have combined insulin resistance and deficiency, those who are having severe insulin resistance, those who are mild age related and obesity related diabetes. Now these three subgroups except those who are having severe insulin deficient diabetes, they have least chances of remission. In contrast, those who are having insulin resistant predominant or obesity related or age related type 2 diabetes there we hold a very good chance of diabetes remission with calorie restriction before i end there are very important future questions which needs to be answered before the concept of diabetes remission can be practiced in by lots of us how best we can maintain the initial advantage which is provided by a low calorie diet can we prescribe the same type of low calorie diet to every individual and if yes is the response going to be same or we need to have an individualized tailor-made diet and response next genetics seems to play a very important role it has been shown that 72 percent of the individual with bmi more than 40 do not develop diabetes whether why this is happening which means 
genetically beta strong beta cell protect against development of diabetes in all these trials 16% of those who were more than 55 years of age and 10% of those between 16 to 14 year they have bmi less than 25 kg per square meter body surface area which means they are not obese is this intervention is going to be helpful in such type of patients all the studies on remission of diabetes involve only obese individual what about those who are non obese then what are the beta cell factors that actually prevent return of plasma glucose even with a weight loss of more than 15 kg it has been shown that 14% of that is 5 out of 36 patients does not have remission of diabetes even with weight loss of more than 15 kg again it has been shown that with a weight loss of more than 25 kg after bariatric surgery there is no remission of weight loss so it is more than what we have presently known about the concept of remission lastly duration of diabetes seems to be a major determining factor and a weight loss of more than even more than 20 kg is not associated with a higher degree of remission what about ethnicity most of the studies are done in those who are european in ethnicity whether these findings can be replicated in those with asian or south asian ethnicity which have a different susceptibility to diabetes so these are all the future questions which needs to be answered by doing more research into the field of remission of diabetes so friends to conclude with type 2 diabetes is a condition where people consume calorie in excess more fat than the individual body needs actually actually deposit at ectopic places in liver pancreas and muscle which will result in onset of diabetes negative calorie balance is known to show cause reversal or remission of diabetes at least when we pick up such patients in early stages but partial remission or reversal is possibly possible at probably all stages of diabetes thank you very much